Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Adam. And I'm Heinrich. Welcome to Geeks, Gadgets, and Guns. Woo. Hey, What's the up? classic opening. Hey, it's yeah. only been like seven friggin' years we've been doing this. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, That's boy. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, I know. Seven yeah. freaking years. We're like, we're on the, we're way closer to a decade than not. That's, it's so weird. Uh-huh. It doesn't feel like that long. But then yeah. when I think about it, like in detail though, like everywhere you've gone with your life during that time, you're like, <laughs> yeah, huh? I've been th- like, wow. <laughs> and seven Seven real old time years and internet years. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Like you ready? What 200-ish? we were talking about this in the first episode? VR and augmented reality. <laughs> <laughs> so I, augmented reality. I that. That's back when Google glasses were a thing. Uh huh. Oh yeah, it was. Well, yeah. Back then, I was throwing down money on the kickstarter for cast ar uh-huh. um augment cast ar augmented reality um had a a pair of glasses with a pico projector on it that would project a like a board game backdrop on a retro reflector mat did you so ever you get could, that or not no because they they sold the company to a venture capital guy and before they actually released any hardware they closed them down and sold off all their assets and refunded all the kickstarter money damn so i got the refund but i really wanted the device the game display gas glasses because the whole point was for playing D and D, where you would have your minis on a board that was animated, and yeah. each person playing had their own view because it was from your point of view projected onto the retro reflector mat and mm-hmm. bouncing back to you, so that like you could pull up your own um, info displays and stuff that the DM didn't want to share with you didn't show up in your view, but it would pop up in the person he was sending it to. Okay. That sounds really cool. Like, yeah, it was super awesome. But yeah, I, it's one of those. Oh, I mean, Oculus was a thing then back before it was owned by Facebook. Yeah. That's when Oculus was brand new and independent. Mm-hmm. I think, I think Vive might have been a thing then yet or not. No, Valve was, Valve was still deciding between. No, no, that's the index. I'm talking about the Vive. Oh, HTC Vive where HTC and Valve worked. Uh Uh-huh. What year? Back then it was pretty much just Oculus. Like there was rumblings of Microsoft and Google doing Let's VR, see. Okay, but... HTC Vive, Wikipedia. Uh, March 2015. So that would have been nearly a year after we started the show. Okay. Yep. This probably would have been starting to hear about it then. No, they didn't announce it until. Yeah, like. Well, the company was founded in 2013, right? Oh, let's see. I guess 2014, they were showing some virtual reality systems. Yeah. Still, though, that's crazy. (laughs) And and Google Glass, that just faded into oblivion, didn't it? Yeah. um, And then uh, Snapchat has done like a couple of AR glasses, but it never got widespread, really, because... Just, I mean, some of the filters Snapchat does is absolutely freaking amazing. And the fact that it's in real time? Yeah. 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 That's and pretty, pretty cool. Here's the thing. If those glasses were to work that way, mm-hmm. those, oh. I mean, 
those filters were the stuff we were talking about in episode one that we'd love to see. <laughs> like yeah. Toon World? Or no, Toontown. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I still love that idea. It's oh. it's not like... It, I mean, that that that's a reality, basically. And that's so crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, of course, there's the long-rumored Apple car and Apple... <laughs> augmented reality stuff man took a while <laughs> <laughs> the car was that's been rumored for a very very long time and so far it's never ever shown up it's never even been that good of a rumor yeah it's always been really oh, far-fetched to me at least good god actually facebook acquired oculus before this show started March of 2014, Facebook bought Oculus. Oh, is that early, huh? Yeah. Oh. It's like, wow. I mean, Heinrich, we got a chance to get you actually trying the Oculus Quest. What would you say your impressions of that were? Uh, Oculus Quest is what all of the lay people want VR to be. Where it just works and is fun and you don't have to screw around with a very powerful pc to do it i mean you did notice that there were some things that were kind of lacking the graphics were not 100 percent there but yeah, the, it's, the it's screens limited. were amazing yeah it it's limited on graphics processing but it looks good and the motion tracking is really good and it the price is really hard to beat yeah, and the whole and inside the thing just out. works yeah yeah I've never, I don't think I've ever tried an Oculus. I've only tried the, um, the, the Valve one. No, not the Valve one. That's the, 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 the Vive. Tried the, Tech, the Vive, the, that's it, yeah. Valve was involved with the Vive, though. Yeah, they were, but I don't, but it gets confusing because now they do have their own, and supposedly yeah. it's the best on the market, but I haven't tried it yet. It is one of the best, though, yeah. God. I, that seems it's, to be the consensus, it's so It's three I'd times the price of the Oculus, uh, the Oculus Quest 2. And it's honestly, a thousand, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. the Quest 2 comes in about 300 bucks. And honestly... Yeah. The Quest 2, you have to have a Facebook account, though. though. Did you know that? Yep. I don't like that. (laughs) I know you don't like that, but honestly, for the price tag and the game library that you can download directly to the device, it's kind of worth it. Now, it is advisable to spend a bit extra money to figure out something with the headset to make it not so jank. But I spent the extra money to get an extended battery. And I think that was a very good investment because it gave me a high quality strap with the extended battery life. And I have not regretted that at all. Yeah. Yeah. The, does the standard head strap have the adjuster dial that? Oh, God, no. The standard okay. the standard adjuster, you would look at that having using having used the index and just go, the crap is this bull crap? <laughs> Yeah, because the the knob like that, the aftermarket head strap on the Quest or that the Index has, it really is a nice way to oh to adjust the head strap. Yeah, on. no, no, <laughs> you really should see the default strap. It is bad. <laughs> is it just a piece of Velcro? No, no. Oh, let's see. Let's pull up a browser. Let's see if I can find a picture. It's it's. Uh, yeah, here we go. Okay. Here's a link. It it's bad on oh. toast. Ugh. Yeah, it, it's literally just a strap, and then you have to adjust it. Basically, you have to take it completely off your head to adjust every yeah. single time. It's like two sliders and elastic, and no. oh, that's... Uh, nope. I don't even really have hair, and that bothers me. <laughs> yeah. 
it, like yeah, I that's said, stupid. It's bad. Yeah, but getting getting the battery pack stra- the battery pack one, I would say is worth it. Otherwise, for like yeah. twenty bucks, you can buy something way better off of Amazon. Twenty thirty bucks. Yeah, there you go. It, yeah, it, but what <laughs> really what it comes down for me is I find that way more often I'm using it. The problem is I've had so many issues trying to get it to work with PC VR where it's just mm-hmm. acting odd or weird or off the cuff. Then again, that's kind of PC gaming. I mean, we could talk about the whole two worlds insanity. Heinrich, did you hear about that at all or not? It's not ringing a bell. Okay, so this came out on Thursday, aka yesterday, July 22nd. That the Amazon MMO two worlds that's in it, that they put into beta was killing RTX 3090 graphics cards. Graphics what? cards that are currently going from anywhere from two thousand on the low end to up to three to four thousand in the last couple of months. Supposedly, Killing as in cooking them so they no longer work. As in, sometimes people would hear a pop and the magic smoke would escape. Oh boy! Um, most of the time, it seems to be EG- EVGA for the Win Three cards. It's kind of yep. what it seems to be, but there's a lot of interesting questions here, but apparently the frame rate in the menus were being, the menus are fully rendered and the frame rate was 100% uncapped. <laughs> Oops. So it would, Oopsie. apparently what it would do is go to thousands of FPS and do a full power ramp. All the fans would go to max and then boom. Crash. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, it's just a menu, but you still have to remember. Well, here's to the thing: J2, supposedly they fixed it, and supposedly EVGA is sending out replacement cards to anybody who are made it with the issue. <laughs> but J2 sends to a video. He tested it with one, and he was checking the power draw on those cards. It was kind of terrifying. I know <laughs> I pointed that out to Adam to have him watch it. What did you think when you were looking at the power draw while we were just running around in it? Uh, he is sweaty palms. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. He, he would go and use uh, MSI Afterburner to set the power limit. Yep. The For the Win 3 card. So he'd set the power limit to like 100% or 102%. Then he'd be running around in game maybe pulling like... 115, 118%, 120% power limit. Yeah, it got up to 120. and Yeah, ooh, it would be bouncing it, it, around like up to 120. The frequency wasn't changing on the GPU or CPU core, mm-hmm. but the voltage was. It was kind of bouncing yeah, all over the place, and the power yeah. draw was increasing. And when we're saying power draw increasing, we're talking 300 to 400 watts to just the graphics card. Oh, man. So, like, an entire second power supply. <laughs> okay. Now, Heinrich, get this. He was only using an 800-watt power supply while doing this. Uh-huh. It's like, okay, this is using the limited BIOS. Yep. Yeah. Heinrich, like, yeah. <laughs> that graphics card has a, quote-unquote, unlimited BIOS, where it allows it to draw up to 900 watts, they say. Oh, Jesus man. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine how hot that'd get? <laughs> Oh, he was bur- well in the video. He supposedly burned himself and melted a thermal lead trying to yep. measure the backside <laughs> of the GPU. <laughs> Here's the thing: when he puts yeah. it into unlimited mode, it was pulling 500 plus watts to the graphics card. <laughs> yeah. Now, mind you, this is using three eight-pin leads, but holy frack! That's <clears throat> just insanity. It's not good. And the game did not uh, look super that amazing to be like. No, <laughs> not for that. Yeah. And, I mean, personally, I'm kind of half tempted to go. Hmm. I'm wondering 
if my graphics card in my newest build could be susceptible to that because oh right it's a 3080 ti which is more or less a slightly gimped 3090 right it's like what three percent mm-hmm. off or something like that <laughs> i don't remember but even at that it's, it's not like, a lot it's not much it's like okay well it only has two power leads and hopefully at some point i will be able to get um uh, water block for it and then water cool <laughs> the fine. thing because oh god that much power can you imagine what that's doing to the vrms on the chip oh. it's like the amount of just processing the power to go to the CPU is just nuts. Yeah. Well, it's kind of surprising that they're not reflowing the solder on the board and having parts just fall off. That could be mm. what's happening. Just like that much heat in one card. I mean, it is a triple fan card. I'm like, I'm wondering if Still. any of them that died were water cooled. Because you could, with the water cooling, it could probably handle that a bit better. But God, that is that is yeah. insane. Pushing five hundred watts through one card, it. I just flash back to the heater that I put in my garage. That's fifteen hundred watts. What I mean, we we. What were we pulling? Like 600 watts with the Corsair 1 in this monitor when we let you fire up Mech Warrior? Yeah. Yeah, but it's that's through the entire PC, not through one card. Touche. Like 500 watts in just the graphics card with even with three fans, they're not pushing that much air to, over it to push that heat away out into the room no and the 3090s are known to have issues with overheating vrms which when i first heard about the issue i'm like crap are the vrms to blame because i could Mm -hmm. totally see the vrms as the issue yeah Uh, okay the 3090s have just, vrms i th- not i'm not sure if all of them do but i think a lot do they have so much video memory that they have the vi- video memory chips on the front of the motherboard on the bottom of the board where the graphics core is and then the flip side of the board mm-hmm. and it's the ones on the flip side that are at issue well those would be the ones that are on on the top where the heat's rising to where the heat's rising to, and all you maybe have is a passive backplate. Yeah, yeah, you don't have fans blowing air across them. Yeah, well, unless that, you've added a fan. Well, even at that, people are like, they're they're looking at like a hundred to a hundred and nine C. Oof. Yeah, it's like, huh? Well, in theory, um. With the graphics card I had, according to EK, there is a block, (laughs) but it's for the 3080 Ti and the 3090, and I can also get an active backlight, even though mine wouldn't have any VRMs on the back. Having an active metal cooling backplate to pull more (laughs) heat out this card? Yeah. That might be worth a hundred bucks. Uh-huh. Yeah, pulling more heat off the other side of the card is probably not a bad plan. <laughs> mm-hmm. All heat removal is, 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 is it's in the right direction for sure. Yeah, I think we can all agree on that. Just fill the case <laughs> with liquid nitrogen. God, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> it's technically sure, inert. I'm pretty sure Jay's two cents has done that. <laughs> no, I'm like, um, gamers nexus sure. though. I'm looking it up. So I know it's been done. Honestly, I'm curious to see if Gamers Nexus is going to attack this one because they normally have really good takes and they do it very scientific. And some of the stuff when Talking Heads were first bringing up is like JC Sensors, like, oh yeah, what if they're using the pigtails where they run one power lead to the graphics card and then you know how you have that little secondary piece that comes off? Yeah, Did they that run that in directly to it as well? It's like. Hmm. What hmm. kind of loss are you looking at on that? 
Jay's two cents did my first time overclocking on liquid nitrogen in November 2017. Yeah, <laughs> but but that's not filling the entire case. I think that was just doing an LN2 block on either yeah. the CPU or the uh, GPU. Adam, did yeah. I ever tell you that the motherboard I got actually comes with LN2 settings? <laughs> Is it really? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, Heinrich got a chance to look at this thing. What are your thoughts on that motherboard? <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous. Yes. Yes, but I mean, it has a nice. little screen in the back. I mean, uh -huh. we were... That's pretty cool. Oh, I screwed up when I did the install on it. So, oh, no. I plugged in the M.2s. And I think, okay, they're perfectly plugged in and it's kind of a pain because you have one screw that holds in both m.2s well mm. i'm so i plug in two m.2s and i plug in one sata drive to it and i think okay it's only detecting mm -hmm. two of the drives all right well i have a one terabyte here and a two terabyte okay those should be the two mvmes i'll have to chase down the sata problem later i installed the one terabyte that's supposed to be the pcie 4.0 nvme Oops. Turns out that was the SATA drive. No wonder I'm getting slightly lower scores on this than I was getting with uh, 3900 and the same graphics card. Because okay. that at least was on NVMe. Then again, <laughs> I was getting within like 300 points using a SATA drive. Good God. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> seriously, still coming in 99th percentile on that. Actually, it did score higher using Import Royal. It just didn't in Time Spy. <laughs> mm, gotcha. <laughs> but you, but in Time Spy, it spiked. Uh, I think when me and Heiner were doing the test, it spiked twice up to five gigahertz during the Time Spy yeah. test. Yeah, that's I, awesome. I think the max. CPU temperature was like 60C. No shit, that's not bad. Yeah, it stayed cool. Yeah, oh, I, that's that's like right where you want to be. Dude, you realize like almost all the time that thing is like 38 to 40C on the CPU? Like almost all the time. It's only when it's Even spikes. under load? Even under load, it's under 50C most of the time. Unless you're that's giving awesome. it full beans. Sure. It only hit 60C. Okay, so you know in Time Spy when it does a CPU test and it just slams the core? Yep. That's when she got the full beans. And that's when she hit 60C. I think she spiked to 60 or 63C. And then but just started coming not back bad, down. Because that's usually... I mean, anytime you you just throttle or uh, you know jam on the CPU like that, it's going to get hot. But Considering we're 60s, talking 16 cores... Yeah, that's that's pretty freaking good. Oh yeah, uh, and that thing when it's when you set the thing to max beans, it's pretty good. Uh, granted, I'm really a fan of the Corsair One. I I'm really liking it. Downside is kind of like the Linus review says. Yeah, the stuff gets hot. It just it's yeah. super dense. It's hot, and the default fan profile. Not a fan. It like that's what I'm noticing on Corsair stuff. Even with the Hydro X, by default, it tries to go for the quietest possible, and it's just like, yep, we're just gonna maintain, you know, like overall max. We're not gonna go too far. We're not gonna lag it too bad. It's like, okay, so you're laying it default to like. ADC before really ramping things up a lot. It's like, can we ramp things up before that? <laughs> hmm. Um. Mm, no. It's gonna be a hard no. Granted, on my Corsair <laughs> One on idle, it's like sometimes the fan just goes completely to off, which is amazing considering it's got one fan. But it's one fan that will sometimes be zero RPM, five hundred, seven hundred. And then full beans is 2200 RPM. And you can definitely hear it at 2200, but it's not bad. Okay. The downside is if you don't get that thing ramped up, the temperatures run pretty hot. I mean, even Minecraft, 
was getting the computer decently hot. And so you kind of, I kind of set a custom profile, like 70% fan speed, about 1600 RPMs. So it's a nice, smooth, controlled, cool in the background. And what that is doing is keeping like the CPU package at idle at 100 degrees Fahrenheit and GPU at like 70 Fahrenheit. (laughs) (laughs) Where we'd probably be looking at like 120, 130 if I left it on the default. Maybe even as high as 150. So kind of a difference. Okay. Though, Adam, have you ever fired up Minecraft uh, Windows 10 Edition and slammed in the RTX stuff on your computer? I know you've got an RTX card, but have you done that yet? Actually, no. I um, The last time I played it, I don't think I even had bought the 2070 yet. It's been a while. On that machine. I've played it on other oh, machines. You need because... to. I mean, all right, Heinrich, how would you I describe it? I have the Java it? edition. <laughs> Is that going to be a problem? Yes. Because it has to be Windows 10, right? It has to be the Windows 10 edition. I believe since you own the Java, there was a time where you could have upgraded it for free. You might have to buy it Maybe I did. I might have done that. That sounds like I kind of remember that. Well, what you would do is... And I know I had to switch my account over because I've been playing Minecraft since Alpha, so... Yeah. You would just go into the Microsoft Store (laughs) and download it and you would have to sign in. So, yeah, I actually ended up buying the Windows 10 edition because I previously owned the Java. I couldn't find the login. Then I get that. And then it's like I started playing again with uh, a couple of friends. And so we're all doing the Java edition. But I'm just like, you know, what? we're going to fire up RTX. And so me and Heinrich took a few minutes. It's like first time I fired it up, I'm like, eh, I'm not seeing much. And then we fired it up again. And what was your first impression on it, Heinrich? Did you notice anything really different at first or... Is it worth my while, Heinrich? <laughs> <laughs> well, Heinrich, how would you describe when we first fired it up and our first initial impressions on it? When we first fired it up, it, nothing looked all that crazy because I mean, we hadn't figured out how to actually get the RTX enabled. Oh, that's the thing. Uh, the RTX was enabled and we didn't notice it. Not at all. So yeah. we go in, we turn off RTX and go... This looks the same. I'm not noticing anything different. And then mm-hmm. we turn it back on and we start looking around and all of a sudden I'm looking like and like Wait. Yeah. It's Look like at, yeah. Then it kicked in. It's like, oh I mean you're starting to see stuff like so the one we went in was I think they called it Atlantis. Or Aquatic Adventures. Something like that. So, so yeah. You're underwater. You've got a potion, so you're just underwater. It's a world you can't do anything in. Mm-hmm. What yeah, you it's just have to wander around and look. What you have to start looking for is mm. when you're underwater, look up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Everything yeah. underwater is reflected off the underside of the water. Oh, awesome. Yeah. When you look straight up, there is a real fisheye effect created by the water. When you go from underwater to above water, the everything warps in a realistic fashion. Yeah, it they have the the refraction as you break the surface. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, when you're above water, they have the real reflections of everything across the water bouncing off of the surface to you. And then when it gets to night and you have like illuminated blocks, Oh my uh-huh. god, it's so beautiful. <clears throat> it, it, I mean, in some places we would look at it and we go, yeah, yeah, that. Oh, that looks amazing. We turn off RTX. It's like, ooh, this kind of looks ugly. Like, <laughs> RTX back on. Oh, this is amazing. Draw distance. I'm nil. I, I'm <laughs> watching a. Uh, I'm watching an RTX on off gameplay of it right now, and I see what you're talking about. It's a. It's a night and day difference. How did you not notice it? Is it just because you were like, where uh, we were it's at? It's just that natural looking because it does look like it's supposed to be it, there. It looked like it looked like Minecraft. I think we had to update the draw distance. 
No, no, uh, because the draw distance no. automatically updated it, and so we started seeing more because you couldn't see much. I think it set our draw distance to like nine blocks in RTX mode. It was oh. super short. Wow. Yeah, we had to set. Well, something. then, yeah, it wouldn't be rendering all the stuff that you're looking at in right. the background. So here's that the thing: makes sense. it was pegging the GPU. It was pegging a 3080. Oh no! It. <laughs> It makes sense, though. And this was using DLSS. <laughs> no shit. It is... Yeah, this is this is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> pretty much like, what we ended up doing is we started sh- getting closer to, to the stuff that actually looked good. And that's where uh, you saw it. And there was a section where we come up and we're like, is that glass? It was... <laughs> yeah, It was I've the seen... water. It was the water. It was a waterfall. Oh that my just, god! That just happened in this. It was a waterfall. He was showing, and it looked like glass on the right side of the screen, kind of in the beginning of the video. I'm watching it on mute, just as this guy's walking through different terrain and stuff. And holy shit! Oh, this is from GeForce's website, so I'm sure it's been somewhat enhanced from what it actually looks like. But no, actually, it really hasn't. <laughs> is that pretty accurate? Yeah, honestly, with what we saw. It looked way better. Okay. Because it, it really depends on where and what you're looking at, but uh, like at a minute 20, mm-hmm. where you're looking at some of those blocks, oh, and the reflections okay. off the blocks, and you flip it off and on, it's like <clears throat> night and day. Yeah, that's what the, the the in the video, that's what the person's doing is flipping it on and off, mm-hmm. and it's cool to watch it. I do the same thing when I go back to my Master Chief collection and play the and play like Halo Two, and you can switch between <laughs> the original graphics and the uh, yeah, updated ones. The anniversary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, uh-huh. I don't know why, but I, I hit that button often just because it's cool. Because, like, I switch it back, and it's like, oh, nostalgia. And then I switch it to the good <laughs> graphics, and I'm like, oh, shit, this is awesome. I'm very... Oh, wow, the clouds in this. Oh, sorry, the video. Anyway, go on. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I'm really, really curious to see... Well... I'm trying to think of the way to phrase this, so I... Uh-oh. That means it's controversial. No, it's just... I kind of wish that you could do this with the Java edition. Oh, do what? RTX and Java? Yes. Oh. Aren't there I know mods how to... to allow that? Here we go. It's gotta be. That's Adam, what I was gonna this say is, is the, the one we were looking at mine. here. It is, yeah. I, I'm wondering what this is going to look like in future when you have more different graphics cards. They can do so much more. It's just, oh, oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It It's a night and day God, difference. I, I wish I was creative enough to build this kind of stuff. Yeah, everything I be... build is utilitarian. I look like I look like I'm trying to build for the Iron Curtain. Like, See, <laughs> I've been working with just people. Cold and sad. Okay, here's the thing. I've been working with people in Minecraft recently, and I found out I am a really weird person because I've spent most of the time. It's like, okay, so we have our main base. Okay, this you guys go out and you find a village. You find a village. All right, I'll follow you to the village. And they meander all over. And I start going around and I'm like, all right. And then I start working on building roads so it's easier and not meandering and losing your way. And then I'm like, yeah. and I start pulling up, what are the actual locations? It's like, oh, wait, this is here, this is here. Hey, wait a minute. And then build a road to connect it and then move like two days out of travel off the path. And then I do another way to take it down to one day. And then I go and I build nether portals, even though we haven't yep. found more than one block of diamonds so far. So nice. it's, what? I have, you, I have you built build infrastructure. That's what you do. Uh, you do. Well, so far right. I have built three nether portals and connected two of them. So you can run between them 
completely safely through the nether as a shortcut. And I plan on doing more. Nice. But yeah, I definitely want to turn this RTX stuff on because I keep seeing these videos and it's so cool. This is one I just linked you guys. That he basically took his build from 2009 oh. and mm. then compared it to 2020 with ray tracing. It's and like, wow. <laughs> so here's the Holy thing. Holy crap. <clears throat> With I'm trying to figure Minecraft... out vanilla textures, though, because they're really realistic. No, these are updated textures for RTX because you have to do texture mapping on all of it in order to do all the reflections. So but so the texture mapping, all that, that's all built in with the Microsoft version. I just yes. have to turn it on. I don't have yes. to screw around with. OK, awesome. <laughs> then I might just fucking buy it because. This looks so fucking sick. I know, right? <laughs> Minecraft is like the simplest game ever, but you're like, oh my god. Like, this is this is what I wanted Minecraft to look like more than ten years ago. <laughs> oh. You know what I'm really tempted to do? What? Take some of the realms that I made and turn them into Microsoft realms from on the Xbox so I can bring them over to the PC. I fired up an old computer two days ago and i have a whole bunch of worlds from when i had a minecraft server back then i had a i had an ubuntu <laughs> tower and i had a uh, port forwarding turned on and like i had my network configured hey, so Adam, that people could actually log into my like i was running a proper minecraft do you, server do you want your brain to melt usually if you have a vr headset there's this thing called vivecraft so you can oh, actually do yeah. room scale vr in oculus in vr so room scale so cool. minecraft in vr now there is a difference with the quest that works with the windows 10 version you can use vivecraft but it's supposed to, to work by default out of it i have not gotten it to work at all even mm -hmm. if i'm using my corsair one so i'm not going to say it's 100 percent there but supposedly it works Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I haven't gotten this excited about Minecraft in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> the best <laughs> thing the best thing about Minecraft is it doesn't require that much because some of the play I've been doing, so one of my friends fired up a realm and we've been running around in there. So I've been using mobile hotspot, firing up my laptop and playing off that. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. That probably doesn't use that much bandwidth either. So it's perfect. Yeah. Very much so, but it's oh. I gotta admit, it yeah, it, it does look amazing. And the water really does show The water so looks much. like water. Exactly. Yeah. Schnozberries look like schnozberries. It's crazy. Okay, that's an interesting question. The reference to Willy Wonka? No. Has somebody no. made Willy Wonka's factory in Minecraft? I assume I'm probably sure. yes. Stand by. The question <laughs> is, is it in the Windows 10 version, and can we see it in non-RTX and in RTX? Stand by. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> if it's if it if it's been thought of it's on the internet so you you said it that means it exists it's a corollary <laughs> to rule 34 it, it exactly that's what i'm is. thinking now my question is uh is there a a reasonably priced hk binary trigger pack <laughs> this one even has a, a chocolate river Okay, that's pretty good, but no RTX on that one, so... Well, here's we'll the thing. Take... Is it in the Bedrock edition of the game, or is it in the Java edition? Because if it's in Bedrock, then all's fair. I uh, I don't know what these words you're saying are. I, I know... Uh, okay, I know so Minecraft. I don't Minecraft <laughs> that works cross-platform, so... Anything that's Bedrock, so Nintendo Switch, uh, the PC, Windows 10 Edition, the Xbox, the PlayStation, all of those, and uh, several of the mobile phone versions, those use Bedrock. So Holy there's shit. Java Minecraft, and then there's the Windows 10, 
and all the others, and those are Bedrock, which means they're cross-platform and cross-compatible. And there is a time-lapse video of someone building the chocolate factory in Minecraft. (laughs) It's a time-lapse, and it's accurate. (laughs) The question is, can I actually get that and... The map? Yes. Uh, I'm pretty sure the link I sent you would have that. Uh, interested in my world download? Tenth video will be filling space for the builders coming by download. Make sure you subscribe. Oh yeah, it's on the YouTube channel of the video in the link I sent you. <laughs> so yeah, you can download it, turn RTX on, and see what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Only if it's Bedrock. If it's not Bedrock, it won't work. Uh, this is. Uh, doesn't say in the. Yeah, and it's from the 2005 film. Yeah, but it's still... Published last month, so... Yeah. But how long did it take me to find exactly what you said? (laughs) (laughs) It didn't give it as a download immediately. It is a failure. It was an extra click. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Extra five, because I'm not signed in on this YouTube. Well, that's a you problem. I didn't cause that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you just you just pipe down. Interesting. Your nonsense. Now, here's the question. Oh, where's this link? I want this link. Give me the link. Give me the link. Oh my god. I, I I'm not a crazy person. Quit looking at me like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do crazy things. I want to do. Here's here's the 1971 version. Yay! <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. It was the very first recommended video <laughs> cool. after the one that I just sent you. But yeah, you there can we go, probably... PlanetMinecraft.com. Boom. <laughs> and yeah, you can download it and look at nice! it. Nice! It's the Bedrock Edition even! There you go. I hooked it up. And I'm going to download it myself because I'm going to get the RTX version of Minecraft now because it looks too awesome and I'm not putting my card through enough trauma. So, (laughs) (laughs) Mommy, no! Yes! (laughs) I I mean, why have it if I'm not going to use it, right? It's like those people that like custom build a jeep and put it put a lift in and make it all badass but never take it off road (laughs) okay in my defense that was kind of halfway done with my pickup but you know i something something oddness with 2020 means less time driving up and down the range than i was really expecting (laughs) yeah but fair i mean but but, but you still will. I, I mean, a little part of me is like, what can that pickup do without a governor? What can I do without a governor? Guys, I want to know what <laughs> it can do without a governor. Anybody know where the, where the you know, uh, uh, so get V8 into Mustang stop? <laughs> Heinrich, I don't know if I brought this up. Uh, I know I mentioned it to Adam, but the 2021 Ford Shelby F-150... Uh-huh. Yeah, they supercharge the same engine that I have in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> say that again. What did, what did you say? The new 2021 F-150 Shelby. Yeah. They took the 5.0 V8 Coyote engine and supercharged it. For a total of 795 horsepower. <laughs> wow. I, I just think, found a video of that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it's like a roughly 400 or a little under 400 when it's stock. Yeah, this video says 775. No, it, uh, for, this is from a Ford dealership, but I'm sure it varies. Is that the 2021? Oh, sick. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. I can wow. tell you this much. My truck that does hit the governor awesome. right when it's shifting from sixth gear into seventh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> what do you think about that? That leaves wow. 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th. <laughs> what are the what's the ratio on that gearbox? Uh, it's gotta be. Or is every gear split? What the fuck? Nine? How many fucking? In I an, mean, in an it, auto it's no rated less. up. That's it's crazy. rated for a gross <clears throat> vehicle and tow of up to fourteen thousand pounds. So it skips the first three gears. No, no, it doesn't. It goes through first and everything. Yes. Wow, that's cool. Uh, Does it? What could, what transmissions in that? I haven't paid attention to newer Fords in a while. Uh, I think the gear ratio, you had a couple of different options. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, 395 horsepower at 5,750 RPM. Uh, four, 400 foot-pounds of torque at 4,500 RPM. Mm. Which okay. is... Pretty pretty good, I think. Well, does it do the job? If so, then yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Can I find the tech specs here? Da, 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 da. Displacement, bore stroke, fuel delivery, blah, blah, blah. 30 liter. Yeah, 400 foot pounds. If it two. were, I love that they specify that. Like they're going to put anything other than a four stroke. <clears throat> but seriously, 395 horsepower up to slightly under 800 just by adding the supercharger and a little <clears throat> bit of tuning. It's like, damn. <laughs> yeah, those superchargers move a lot of air. Yeah. All that right. Sounds sick, too. OK, you know, what, Adam, it's probably going to be easier for me to just give you this link so you can look at the gear ratios yourself. Fair. But yeah, this is the 10 speed automatic. Seven years later, our podcast is us sitting quietly watching videos and reading articles. <laughs> it's always been that. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is new how. Hey, hey yeah, at, le- right. at least now Adam's not sitting in the corner kvetching about how one of his six pack of neons died again. oh god or the mini that just was doomed you know what almost every single car you've had on this podcast has been sudden and inevitable doom in myriads of different ways it's true um i wish i had a car story but i'd I got so tired of going through cars. I finally just got a 2016 Nissan Sentra and it's like the it's the one lower than the base trim. It's like the rental car version where mm-hmm. it doesn't even have like a proper trim name. <laughs> it's basic <laughs> AF as they say and uh it, it works. It just it starts and it drives and then when I when I need it to run, it runs. And when I need it to not, it shuts off nicely. Um, <clears throat> it's not comfortable. Uh, it's not sporty. It, uh, it's got a CVT transmission, which is fun on paper. But when you really break it down, it's a rubber band driven fucking transmission. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like anything other than manual. So it's extra shitty, but Again, I'm grateful because I don't have any stories to report um, other than cheap cars. You definitely get what you pay for, like trim pieces just kind of fall off sometimes. (laughs) And like it's got a it still has a CD player. There's no Bluetooth. Well, there's Bluetooth, but only for the phone, which is dumb. Like I'm going to fucking actually attach that to my like i'm gonna push the answer call button on my stereo on my steering wheel like an asshole no i'm gonna ignore the phone call see if they leave a voicemail call back if i need to anyone i need to talk to is gonna text me first anyway so (laughs) (laughs) so why do i need that quote unquote feature um i'm trying to think the lot i got rid of the I got rid of the BMW back in November, so I'm down to just one car for the first time. Does it truly count as getting rid of it as more or less, please get this this thing gone? (laughs) 
And I sold it to a guy who just he just buys cars for parts and then just sells them as parts. The only difference between what he's doing with it and what I would have done with it is he has space to do it. Because my, my original plan was I'm going to take this car apart completely in my garage and sell every piece on the internet until I make a decent profit. And I definitely could have. I mean, I could sell one door on eBay and make 400 bucks, you know, but it was a lot easier to just take a couple grand in cash and let the guy tow it away forever. So <laughs> that's what I did. If I had more time and money, I definitely wanted it to be a project car. I was going to... I had, I had a couple different ideas with what direction I'd go with it, but because uh, those make really great drift cars. Some people LS swap the engine <clears throat> because the uh, BMW straight six engine that it comes with is a oil burning over engineered nightmare. And uh, it randomly <laughs> explodes. Literally. Uh, that's what happened. The, the third it had two water pumps It had a mechanical one and an electric one. And the electric one was dog shit and had to be replaced three times in the four years I had the car, however long. And the last time it had to be replaced, which I didn't replace it. I ended up selling the car, but, um, it, it literally just exploded and it shrapnel got caught up in other components in the engine and it just wrecked, it just wrecked a whole bunch of shit and I have the list somewhere, but basically everything on it was like it it totaled up to like five grand on a two thousand six uh BMW. So I'm like, that's gonna be a hard pass because I couldn't I couldn't get that if I sold it in mint condition. So <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a no from me, dog. So I was like, all right, here's my options. I take it and I part it out, I sell it as is. Or I keep it in my garage and over time work on it and then turn it into like a weekend car. But I just I don't have time for that shit. So yeah. it's gone. <clears throat> and it's a lot of screwing around that you can yeah. be putting on something else. Exactly. And then in 2019, I, I still had the F-250. I ended up selling that because, again, just I don't have time for it. It's It's expensive to maintain properly and the person i sold it to definitely needed it so it got put back to work which i'm glad to see so that's fine um yeah one one freaking car for the first time in a long time since since before we started this podcast i've always had at least two but when we started this podcast i had three cars and a 32 foot fifth wheel camper <laughs> <laughs> Now I have a car. <laughs> uh, yeah, time well, certainly have changed. That was also four jobs, two cities, and like five fourteen houses ago. Yeah, uh, <laughs> how many has it? It's been one, two, three, four, five, six. That was six houses ago. You moved too much. I mean, I come was on. In Plano. Then I went to North Dallas. Then I went to Austin. Then I went to Waxahachie. Then I went to Duncanville, and now I'm in Arlington. That's six times. And during that time, I have moved a grand total of once, and that was too many times because (laughs) my house is still not together. The longest I've ever lived in my entire life, the longest I've lived in one house, uh, was the house that I was in when we started this podcast. I lived there for four years. That's the longest I've ever lived in one one house (laughs) in my entire life. I've moved 27 times. Oh, jeez. Yeah. No, thank you. Yo. I'm very used to it, and I hate it. I hate it every time. I hate thinking about it. That's so like, stop. I, <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> problem is I keep renting, and, uh, you know, that's not uh, really a permanent spot. Yeah. Um, so when I eventually decide to settle down and buy a place... I'm still undecided where that's going to be. I don't know if I'm going to stay in Dallas or if we're going to shoot to another state or go back up north or I don't know. It's kind of up in the air. And so for now, I'm just here with with my Nissan Sentra and and it's cool. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe the Nissan will explode and I'll have a story. It'll be fine. (laughs) I could. 
Yeah. A tree branch fell on it. That's kind of a thing that happened. <clears throat> I have this giant, um, it's a, a post oak tree in my, that goes over my driveway and it's old as shit. So it's super tall and it's got some dead branches. And every now and then one of those will just fall in the driveway, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a, now I have a two car garage, but it's, it's at this time for sure it was fully occupied with stuff because we're moving things around and so i had my car in the driveway and a storm occurred overnight and so i came out in the morning and there was a giant branch laying next to the car and a nice brand new dent on the top of the car and part of my fender kind of the the plastic bit where the fender meets the bumper that kind of came off it's really stupid and I had had the car probably uh, coming up on a year. Not well, yeah, coming up on a year. And uh, that's a pretty good record for me for something catastrophic to happen. Usually, that's within weeks of owning a car. <laughs> so <laughs> that was good. Uh, yeah, Japanese cars are reliable, man. I've had no issues with it, and I treat it like shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's the, it that's is the like, thing you get a boring car that just works yeah that's exactly what i needed i'm like i need i can't fuck around with something i want because at the time i was very very much struggling with some changes and um i did i couldn't afford to even think about something like that so i took a thousand bucks and i went to a fucking car dealership and i said i need something that runs and drives it needs to be Japanese. <laughs> Don't give me anything American. And I swear to God, if you show me anything German, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's like Toyotas, Nissans, Hondas, they don't break down. Okay. Show me that. Here's the thousand dollars. What can you do for me? And they're like 2016 Nissan Sentra. It's gray with a slightly darker gray interior. <laughs> Perfect. It's got a radio with a CD player. It does have an aux port. Luxury. Perfect. It's got a USB yeah. charger. And, like, the iPhone will hook up to it. And you can play whatever's on the iPhone. But it's clunky. doesn't work. I just use aux. It's also the first car that I haven't had a badass sound system in. Ever. <laughs> I hate that, too. I wear my AirPods to work every morning. I don't even <laughs> fucking turn the radio on. I never use it unless someone else is in the car with me. It just stays off. <laughs> you you get yourself you know, a Bluetooth the... speaker and throw it in the cup holder. I've thought about that. <laughs> Honestly, the I saddest really thing have. is I have all the bells and whistles, and more than half the time I just use my AirPods in my pickup to do the stuff. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> my BMW had an 11 speaker surround sound system. There was a subwoofer under the front passenger and driver seat. And it had like a digital equalizer and a badass amp. And like that thing was immersive. It sounded great. That's the first car I didn't modify the sound in. Uh, no, the Mini was the first car I didn't modify the sound in because I only had it six months. And then God killed it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> long time listeners of the show will know that it was a hailstorm that destroyed my poor Mini Cooper. Such a fun car. Are you sure it was that and not the lack of oil? No, 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 no. That the <laughs> <laughs> there that car got plenty of oil. It leaked it everywhere, but I put it in. <laughs> um <laughs> what what you may be thinking of is after the hail damage the night before the tow truck was gonna come take it and I went and bought the BMW. I took the Mini out and did all the things that I wanted to do in it, but didn't because it was still a new car to me and I was making payments. But since it was going to wholesale on a wrecker, I decided to <laughs> see how good the e-brake worked. Uh, you know, <laughs> see how long the clutch would hold out when I keep when I keep popping it. You know, things like that. Hey, let's. Let's practice all the things I saw in the Italian job. <laughs> <laughs> and that is exactly why really half of them were sold. That. 
I had one really fun night with that car where I was just like, I don't give a fuck. I'll smash it into a pole. It'll be fine. It's going away. It's done. You know, I took like, I always, whenever I get rid of a car, I always take the shift knob out of it. I can't with the Nissan because it's a fucking automatic. But I always keep the shift knob. So I ripped that out of the Mini before it went away. Did the same with the BMW. So every car I've ever sold has come with a post sticking out of the floor. <laughs> it's like a memento, you know? It's a, it's a collection. It's a small piece that... I, I got the idea from King of the Hill, all right? Give me a break. There's an episode where Hank finally gets a new truck after his, uh, his 88 Ford Ranger dies. He gets hit by a train, and Bobby picks up the shift knob from it, and then Hank keeps it. And then he finally buys a new truck. It's like an F-250. It's super sick. I was like, oh, that's a good way to keep like a piece of your car when you inevitably destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that is one piece that is highly unlikely to be totally destroyed. Yeah, that's usually the uh-huh. surviving thing. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, that, that poor Mini Cooper. But I didn't modify the sound because I never had time to. Um, there was only six months. Uh, before that was the neon, and that had that went from a four. No, it was a it, uh, it was a six speaker car, but I redid every component speaker and I added two subs to it, and a badass Kenwood head unit. That that car shook. <laughs> uh, before that was the Ford Focus. I had a very I mean, similar sound system. You could say that you shook it apart. I literally did. <laughs> it, that's how it that, that's why I, same thing it was just going to cost too much to fix and they only wanted like two grand <laughs> but i bought the car for two grand with 30 uh no twenty eight thousand miles it was an 05 and i bought it from the original owner when he moved wasn't to that the one that was uh missing all but one engine mount in the end yes they all they all shook off <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing about a Dodge Neon. Anything Chrysler is going to be pretty, especially when it comes to their parts bin, like plastic surfaces. And like the dashboard was cracked to shit just because of the Texas sun. Like, and that's yeah. very, very common in Dodges. <clears throat> um, transmissions often suck. Uh, I had to replace all the bushings just in my shifter because I was driving it one day. And I went to shift from um, second and the third, and the uh, connector slipped off, and I had a limp stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. It it didn't. I had to like. This is gonna get because I said that. This is gonna sound really bad, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I had to like shake it back and forth until it finally connected again. <laughs> then I was able to shift, and I was cursing the whole way. And then I went on YouTube and looked it up. So then the next day I went, tore out the interior, like the center console and everything around the shifter, found where the bushings were, ordered a new set of like super strength ones, put them on the mount in the transmission and under the uh, shifter. And then it was like, my stick was tight, yo. (laughs) I have a lot of car stories. I I like cars and I, I tend to do a lot of things to them but you remember in high school i had that explorer i was always modifying dumb shit on that yeah a little bit a little bit (laughs) you're not a crazy person the crazy is in the crazy is as the crazy does yeah yeah sure (laughs) (laughs) yeah fun times i've owned a lot of cars yeah i know and the time we've done this show I've owned a grand total of two. That's how many times you've moved. Yes. I've had as almost as many cars as the times I've moved. <laughs> See. Considering that you had started... multiple at the same time. <laughs> well, just counting the ones that I daily drove, it would be the Neon, the Mini, the BMW, the Nissan, and the truck. So five. I've had five vehicles. <laughs> And move six times in seven years. <laughs> then again, I've had... Uh, I've also had four jobs. <laughs> let's see. I've had almost that many semis during that time period, though. 
That's Let's true. See. You have gone through those. Then again, those are consumables, and I mean, God, some of those are mm-hmm. at or over a million miles. So uh, basically, I kind of run a truck until somewhere in the two hundred to four hundred thousand miles. Yeah, you, you drive it until it dies. No, no, I drive or, it and then I pass it down to another one of my drivers, and they drive it till it dies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the perks of being the bus. <laughs> oh, this case you just sent. Holy shit. Oh, so yeah. that's what you're going to do, Heinrich, eh? It's like, that's super tempting. Wow. Ooh. This is the Mod 3 Gundam UC Banshee Limited. Jesus for those Christ, $700? Yeah, that that makes me wow. like, but think God, twice about more? doing oh. this All one, that but... rad space? Yeah. Uh-huh. I think that's the only, that's one of the few builds that would challenge mine for rad space. And God, <laughs> you would be making custom panels and custom airbrushing shit. Probably. You know, I think that thing is a 360, uh, 240, and a 120, based on what I'm seeing. That's there. what it looks like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's a sick looking machine, though. That's, oh, yeah. That's pretty goddamn cool. Where do you put the CD drive? <laughs> I swear don't like I don't have a computer case that I bought completely around having a disk drive that I haven't actually no I used it like a month ago my case is five years old it it has a I still have a blu-ray burner in it I've yeah I, I have a, used actually it. was at new I found this because I was at new egg looking for optical drives to because I need one. See, I the have an irony. optical drive, and this is an optical drive I never want to let go. You're wondering why? Is that the I'm one that's why. super good at ripping? It's the one that's got this tiny, itsy bitsy, teeny weeny little problem. Ew. Um, something, something. It doesn't support 4K Blu-ray, but it can read 4K Blu-ray, and it doesn't have the copy protections to prevent you from copying off 4K Blu-ray. <laughs> nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I it... bought it because it was like, hey, decent light-on drive, and this is back before 4K Blu-ray was a thing, and it's like, oh, no, that mm. one can actually read 4K Blu-ray. Yes! Yeah. Okay, in that scenario, I get it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I have a good 4K <laughs> Blu-ray collection. It has been a yeah, while since do. I actually tested to see if anything could go, go on with it, but yeah. yeah. It'll be fine. Yeah. Oh no, what the hell is this now? It's... <laughs> hey! Oh, it's... it's the same case put in, like, stealth mode. No, yeah. no, it's the same case without all the Gundam stuff, so it's yeah, like half it's the price. same case without the branding so it's yeah. 400 bucks cheaper so the question is are you gonna buy it also did you see the whole gundam theme of stuff that asus put out recently oh i hadn't is gundam coming back or did it never go away it's Depends never on actually who gone to. away it just for a little while stopped coming over here so uh, heinrich like apparently gundam, never gundam saw. is japan's star wars right 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 I just like I remember that being really popular when I was in high school, but then it kind of yeah. went away. I, whoever had the licensing over here, like went out of business and it took a while to figure out who was going to import Gundam for a while. Yeah. And that's finally settled down. Uh, okay. Heinrich, I'm sorry. I know I sent this to you. You were probably smart to avoid it. <laughs> the flip side is. It's all white. But Jace Two Cents did an all Gundam build. Uh oh. Using all the Asus Gundam parts. So they have a Gundam monitor, a Gundam case, a Gundam everything. Welcome to Geeks, Gadgets, and Guns, where we spend the entire time advertising for Jace Two Cents and Linus Tech Tips. Actually, <laughs> LTT never got brought up. We did mention computer, uh, Gamers Nexus, though. We, yeah. <laughs> 
it may as well have come up because that's the other channel. I don't. I could have gone with like. I don't know. <laughs> I don't Heinrich, know. Uh, there, there's a little thing at 11 minutes and 31 seconds. You can kind of see the front of the case. It does look pretty sick. Yeah. And I'll skip ahead. I, I was looking at this unbranded case and thinking, you know, that looks a <laughs> hell of a lot like a Sentinel from Halo 1 or 2. And I bet I could, with a little bit of LED work and some airbrushing, I could make that into a badass Forerunner Halo case. Uh, so you said, oh, look, a blank canvas. Exactly. Now the question yeah, is, black, gray, or white? Um, the amount of repainting I would probably do to it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, uh, I think Let's I saw see. in here that it supports ARGB, uh, which, well, the the thing about RGB is, okay, so what method does it use for control? Does it have its own controller, or do you control, or does it work with one of the others? It uses yeah. mind control. Mm. Like you think about it, and then it happens. Oh, my God. That'd be dope, right? <laughs> you, you really like how they did that glass panel on the front? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that one was cool, but I was, I was looking at this, at that blank case that I had posted. If you click to the black red option, it's a Char Red Zaku Two branded one it's it's I, a completely different case yeah yeah i clicked on it because i saw black and red and i was disappointed because i like the other one better yeah yeah the other one's way cooler yeah i like if you're gonna wait, spend holy, that kind of money you might as well get outlandish with it I, oh dude I dude, think... dude 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 click white and then etx full tower Oh, that is friggin' sweet. Oh, man. White. ATX well, I, th I think that we have the next part of my new build oh, picked shit. out. <laughs> it's $800, but damn! <laughs> wow. It, it's either that. I'm not even it's... in the Gundam, and I, I want this. Uh, the middle tower ATX ain't bad either, but. Damn! Yeah. That I think I can only tower? go full T A T X yeah, with the, mine. I don't know if you go to um the gray version. That one would be super easy to repaint Forerunner from Halo. Yeah, I know. The one I just posted from Thermal Take Ooh. is a thousand dollars. Jesus, <laughs> but, but why? No. Empty. No. Empty. You don't even get Whoa. fans. But, Fuck you. But nothing on that is worth it. Nope. Not at all. I Isn't mean, it great? I just bought it. <laughs> bullshit. Why is it? No, I did it. God, What's the no. extra bay on top? It's just extra, dude. Come is, on. Is that just, is that just like an extra for bay the to separate your... Yeah, your power supply from the instead rest of, of the a, computer. Instead of a basement, they gave it an attic. It, yeah. I like the front module, though, with the rad in it and the water cooling. That looks like the reservoir. That looks pretty sick. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but... I mean, here we go. Go for the Fantex. Uh, let's see. That would be the 719. Yeah, the 719 Inthu. That's what I'm running. It's a $200 case, and it is beast. Not a $1,000 case, so who's more bougie? Me. I just bought it. I just Dude, bought two. Adam, <laughs> I can build two different PCs in one case. I've always wanted to do that. That's what this case can do. And I'm using it all, and... I kind of wish I had a little bit more room inside the case so I could put more rads in there. Wait, so hold on. You said it does. Are you talking like two micro ATX boards or like what's no, the? It can do one micro. Basically, it's one like uh, ITX and then one something up to like 
EATX, even though EATX isn't really a thing. Right. Okay, so do you see that lower portion all the way at the bottom where you've got that little rubber grommet yeah. below the yeah. RGB strip? Yeah. Okay. You slap in another motherboard there for a whole separate computer. And then you can either slap another PSU on the bottom next to that, or I think you can get their specialty PSU that does, oh, too. Oh, I see it. it. It makes way more sense when I look at the back. Mm-hmm. And then your the... PSU stands on its side. Yeah, and you put the the ITX over top of it, and then it looks like it's got a daughter board to make the uh, PCIe slots um, vertical. Mm-hmm. Yep, and that's included with just the case as you buy it and see it here. Oh, no shit. Okay, that's a pretty good buy. Oh, trust me, I am I am super on board with that. Hi, oh, Eric. it's modular, right. too, so you can build it as one and custom... Oh, okay, that's sick. Dude, Does it, it comes come with, with all lo- the plates for that? Yes, well, most of them. There are a couple of plates it wouldn't have, but it also comes with... You know, Heinrich? Uh-huh. That white with the red and the Gundam stuff... That's only like fifty dollars more expensive than this case. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to have your wife come and murder me, <laughs> but uh, I mean, when like, you're talking a hundred and ninety dollars yeah. for the Gundam branding and looking so friggin' sick. Yeah, it's like this. This Char Char's Zaku two. Like, oh yeah. Oh. That that's a badass case. It is freaking amazing, but God. I and mean, a big a big fucking curved panel display oh. would that would go pretty well with this. Yeah, I, you're you're just like sitting there, you saw what I built, and you're like, I must one up Matt. <laughs> I mean, you. I know you will one up me when it comes to the graphics cards when the prices come down. You're totally going for a thirty ninety, and if you can, you're probably going to do an active water block oh, on yeah. both sides. Oh yeah, that's sick. <laughs> I want this case to. Okay, I want every case that we've looked at. <laughs> Honestly, the Fantex N through seven nineteen. For two hundred dollars is really a, a friggin' amazing case. That's a bang for your buck case right there, because that price with what you get with it, like, is it is it sturdy yeah. too? Or oh is god, it, does it yeah. Feel cheap? Or, oh yeah, okay. that's it's no. a stout case. It is super okay. stout, and it's premium. Okay. It, it literally everything about it screams premium. Uh, I I mean, Corsair is pretty darn premium on their cases most of the time. So let me put it this way. Thermal take, pretty low end. And I'm pr- the reason I bring that up is one of your most recent bills was in a thermal take case, if I remember right, Adam. Yeah, I used um, Corsair I is used one. Corsair is a <clears throat> real major step above thermal take in terms of quality yes. build, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, I know. Fantex I like is that. like that plus ten percent. So that level huh. of leap plus ten percent over top of Corsair. I could get behind that. Okay. You literally get a plastic sorting with all the extra screws for the case. And they even give you oh, I remember extras. you sent me that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And every you get a box with all the extra stuff in it. So you the extra screws are in it, the extra backplate covers, a place to store them all, the whole Can I fit yards. my motherboard in this case though? Which case? The uh, the Fantex one, the 719. Dude, unless you have an insane motherboard, yeah. It's a B450, uh, Asus uh, Strix. B450? Of course. Rod. Okay, cool. I mean, dude, I'm running a standard full-on ATX. I mean, what is it? I yeah, mean? I always go full ATX, and so no, that's what no, I got. No, this... The Fantex supports ATX Plus. It's not like just ATX. I mean, you get a full, I'm talking full color book for it. 
Okay. All right. Actually, if you scroll down on the page, yeah, it I will did. show you like the main motherboard size, the dual systems, what you can put where. Yeah. Ooh, this one's kind of cool. Right. Uh, the Evolve X by the same company, same price. It was in the uh, compare list on the bottom, but I don't think this one will do dual systems. If I'm going to buy a new case, I want it to do something unique like that. Yeah, see, here's the thing. I really like the fact that the RGB on the case is very subtle, and you can wire it into your motherboard, so it works with, like, most manufacturers. It's, uh, I believe it's called ARGB, so it's addressable, even. Oh, cool. So it's addressable and controllable by your motherboard. So I have an Asus motherboard, and the Asus Aurora Sync just hooks in with that. it. Yeah, the case can either that. control itself or be controlled by my motherboard. So I just give the motherboard control and then turn its control over to IQ and go, Wee! That's fucking awesome. Not gonna, to mention, get, it goes across the top and across the front. And like I said, I've got a 360 and a 480 in there. I, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna buy this case. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Adam. It's fucking sick. I'm definitely getting this. Like, why, why the fuck wouldn't I? I'm sold now. Not to yeah, mention there's happen. filters. Maybe and... when I get back from Chicago, I'll do that. Because that'll be a fun project. I need to find new projects. Did did I mention that it actually has the um, fill port? So it's cut out with a, for a fill port on the top and a drain port on the front. Uh, yeah, you did. You texted me that actually. Plus all the that. plus all the filters, and you can put drives for days in this. Sick. And if you're gonna put like you know, a little thing like a rad on the bottom. You actually have a removable panel for attaching the rad to on the bottom of the case. That is rad. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only thing I would say is if you're going to put 480s in here, maybe go for one of the thinner 480s. I'm kind of extremely care amped because I went for like a 64 millimeter thick rad and then threw fans on it. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, I could get a I could get another Rod Strix 550 in an ITX form factor and put it in this case with my current build, and then I'd have two. Well, one yes. more to go. I'm just thinking out loud because now I'm going down the rabbit hole of okay, what's the second build going to be? What's the ridiculous um, I can push this to? <laughs> like, what kind of dumb shit can I get into with this? Because I'm I'm liking it. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I can. T- is, I, I mean, dope. if you really want to know the gun, the dumb stuff I've been getting into, something, something, <laughs> uh, something, something, MP5 clone, something, something, GC oh, GCA man. 68 sucks. Something, something, <laughs> multiple calls to FFL to actually get them to send their FFL to the website it got purchased from. It's Whoa. literally taken all week to ship because of that. <sighs> Sorry, man. Yeah, well, it, it, it is what it is. It's like, you know, they keep talking about making more and more things receivers, and I'm just sitting here going, dude, dude, getting an FFL that actually you cares enough anything. to know what's going on, just to get, like... When you have the most professional of the FSLs, there's such a pain to get transfers done through because they have the guy that's the FFL holder and the other employees, and most of the other employees don't get it and don't care all that much. Mm-hmm. So they're not getting it done. It's like, oh, God. I Quite literally, I've had to work with them to get them registered through both Brownells and Classic. All these, All these words you're saying are making me anxious. I hate it. I I mean, at a, uh, Heinrich, would you say that it is odd to have an FFL that has not done any transfers and has like, oh yeah, uh, 
I'm not sure who's Brownells, who's Classic Firearms. It's like, wait, well, oh, what? Classic, maybe, but who's Brownells? Even I know all that I stuff. Have, I have. Brownells. I literally had to work with them to get Brownells just so I could get a 1022 tr- receiver transferred in. It's like, <laughs> wow. It's just, guys, guys, I know you're, I know it sucks, but it's like, I know five miles away there's, there's a <laughs> gun shop that would get it all and not be a problem, but it's like, oh, right. Receiver. There's a river there. And a change in laws, it's like, okay, this sucks. Yeah. Mm. It, it, it really is, uh, it really is a line. It's like, yeah, no, it's a receiver. It's, uh, and so that has to be in your state of residence. Or it's a pistol. That has to be your state of residence. Long gun, you're cool. But anything else? Nope. Uh-huh. Yeah, if we could even just get it to where, if you're buying from an FFL, you can do it in a different state. I know it's like okay, FFLs within twenty miles of a state line can do it. Yeah, just just make it. If you're buying from an FFL, they can sell to someone from a different state. It's crossing state lines is not that big a deal anymore. I know, but. The the laws don't reflect that. The laws don't change that. It's just... Yeah. Because they're dumb. Oh, they're this so case dumb. Weighs, this case weighs 31 pounds. Yeah? <laughs> so? <laughs> I'm watching a... Uh, it's, it's from Hardware Canucks on YouTube, and it's the O11 XL versus the Enthu 719. And they're doing a side by side, and they were just showing the dimensions and the weight, and it's thirty one pounds. So I guess you were right when you said you could fit anything in it, because seeing <laughs> this in motion, uh, <laughs> even my full system in this case would still look like the case is empty. <laughs> well, I mean, I sent you pictures so you can see what my full system in it looks like. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't. Uh, I like this. I like this a lot. I want it now. I, yeah, it's one of those where it's like, no, dude, I love it. It's awesome. Like, I've seen yours and stuff, and I was like, okay, that's pretty dope. But, like, now that I'm really looking at the details, I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, now I get it. And that and that little cover on the back panel actually makes it so the wire disaster does not look as disastrous. Yeah. Emphasis yeah. on disaster because the when you're per, when you're doing individual fan RGB controls, it gets disastrous fast. Granted, if I was doing something other than IQ control, it wouldn't be quite so bad. But IQ super great. I really like IQ, and I can and I've worked with it. Not to mention all the other water cooling stuff that works with it. The flip side is, uh... are you using a full ATX board yes. in this one? Okay, yeah, then I'd be fine. Yeah. <clears throat> There's plenty of room for I, everything. I, I, I'm not sh- I don't remember exactly what the specs on are on the board that I have. Let's go to order history and find out. Yay! Hey, wait. I have the new egg app, so I can just use its QR code scan. Yippee skippy. I, what? No. Uh. I don't know what's happening. This is riveting radio. (laughs) Hey, hey. Uh. I'm right? Yeah, I agree. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) I know you're right, but I don't want you to be right. So can can I, can I phone a friend? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. You're on the phone with all your friends right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. Can I can I phone a uh, neutral decided, acquaintance? Let's record it for 7 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then it's like, "Oh yeah, we'll, we'll we'll stop doing it at episode 200. We're at 272." 
Um, well, scratch that plan. I don't know. I, kind of I mean, like it's honestly, never really going to go away. It was one of those where it's like, yeah, I was going to, you know, stop. And it's like, oh, and, and then stuff happened. And it's like, nope, nope, I can't stop. I can't stop. <laughs> help, See, help. That's why I think as long as uh, technology is a thing, <laughs> we're probably not going to stop doing this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now well, it's a habit. Yeah. Not to mention, like, like there's all that other things, but yeah, Adam, there's it, the motherboard I grabbed, so you can actually see the specs. It is, I mean, that motherboard is freaking ridiculous, and <laughs> it would look so much cooler if I didn't have a two and three quarter slot card covering the lower section of the. Oh, RGB. that is sexy. Yeah, I mean, you you can see the EK water block on the VRMs. It's like. <laughs> that's cool all right <laughs> i know all right we're, we're all just sitting here going we want to do the awesomest computers dudes the awesome computers are calling i want to uh -huh. do all of them though the, there are secondary issues but oh i didn't actually tell you it took out the uh henry big boy x <sighs> We had a 44 mm. bag with the can. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! 240 oh grainers are hearing safe. <laughs> Good God. Dude, 240 grain pills downrange hearing safe. 400 grainers that are subsonics, even quieter. <laughs> Holy shit, that's crazy. <laughs> well, that's what you get when you throw a suppressor on the end. Granted, I also took somebody to the range that was like, oh, nah, nah, I'd rather shoot it unsuppressed. Why? They didn't care about the suppressor at all. It's like, but... Why? I, I don't know. It's like, what? I don't think you should be hanging out with them. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it confused me. My brain was broken. I'm like, but... No, you suppress. Granted, then they started, they were doing mostly semi-auto suppressed, and there was certain things like blowback, and they were less fans of the gas that would get returned. Ah. But even even on that, that's, they that's didn't... part of the fun. Uh, no, that, that there's very much not fun with the gas. It's all fun. Yeah. It's the experience. Uh, Unbelievable. Ad Adam... Um, I will tell you this much. You have to shoot cool. with a super long suppressor on an nice. AR-15 that's got super high back pressure, and then you would understand the pain. But even at that, this person didn't even shoot that. They were shooting the shorty that's... can. It's like, there's not that much gas. The wind. There was not <laughs> much wind at all, and what there was was coming back towards you, so really didn't uh. ramp that up bad. Uh -huh. Though I am so tempted to get a Wolfman suppressor, something, something, <laughs> Trilug, something, something, MP5K. Um, <clears throat> I mean, what? <laughs> something, something, dark side, something, something. Actually, Heinrich, I think we, I, I think I have a video idea we need to do, okay? Mm-hmm. Remember how we did the uh, duo, duet thing with the... Um, yeah, the 1022s. The 1022s shooting the CCI quiet ammo? Uh-huh. Yeah. Do that with the lever guns. Yeah, dueling lever guns. Dueling lever guns, one suppressed, one unsuppressed. Yeah. That's probably the closest you're ever going to get to a real comparison for everybody. It probably is, because it's two matching rifles. That we can shoot and match it, the same ammunition through. Yep. You know, I have another question that I'm very curious about. I'm mm. going to go with, it's not going to match up, but I'm curious to test. If we take the suppressor that is perfectly clocked for my rifle and put it on yours, will it still be clocked properly or close enough that it's workable, or will it be so far off that it would have to be reclocked? Huh. That is an interesting one. What do you think? Hmm. 
It depends greatly on their tooling and process. Some some types of machinery would always start the thread in the same spot, but it would just kind of be a random chance as to whether they're using that and whether all the other factors that stack up to the thread start position would match. Mm-hmm. I, my... My usual guess would be don't count on it and kind of expect it to not work. But there's an off chance that it would. Yeah, uh, like I It'd said, be interesting it's, to see. it's an interesting question. So, yeah, I think we need to try that. Oh, yeah, I, I think we do. And I think we need to have the dueling because... I, I'm curious to see what the difference is on camera between a 240 suppressed versus unsuppressed. And mind you, this is a K can, a shorty, a stubby. <clears throat> uh huh. And I'm wondering if the 400 grainers are hearing safe without the can. Hmm. 400 grain pill going a thousand feet per second. It could be. Uh, maybe. It's only an 18 inch barrel, so it's but it's can, not that but, much length to let the gas expand. 18 inches of a uh, 0.44 inch. True. That that's a hell of a lot more than you're ever gonna see on a 223. Yeah, I suppose you're. St- you're not throwing that much powder volume downrange. You're throwing mostly lead, less powder, mostly lead. Yeah, it's like there's a lot, there's a whole lot of lead there, and not that much powder behind it. Flip side is the 300 blackout. Those aren't hearing safe. Not yeah. through a 24 incher. Uh huh. Yeah, and you're at a 300 ca- or 308 caliber. Yeah. With a probably very similar amount of powder. Oh, uh, I mean, some of the loads we're talking were like, uh, I think there was like seven or eight grains of powder between some of the stupid 300 blackout loads I did. Uh huh. Yeah. So it. I wouldn't. I would lean a little more towards not hearing safe. But it would probably be fairly quiet. I agree. I, I, as I, gunshots go. It will be an interesting side by side, but yeah. 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 We definitely have to try it and we get really the do. get the sound meter out and set it ten foot away and see what it tells us. Well, yeah, there is that. You know what I'm going to say? You're just going to be sitting over there going. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. We're, we're going to have to get over that. But once we do, we can do some science. Very true. And yay, science. <laughs> we know those are going to fall like a brick. I just don't want to be the brick on the far end that gets hit by the brick. Yeah, it. it's a you're lobbing it out there, but. If you're, it's one of those things that it's a moderate range gun. Gravity's mostly consistent. Uh huh. It, it's across the farmyard. Yeah. But that, that farmyard is getting hit like a ton of bricks. Yeah. It's like, I'm, yeah, I might as well start up the tractor and hit you with that. <laughs> yep. But, you know, I'm going to say, guys. It, it, we've been going for like uh, over an hour and a half and we're yeah we're yeah. seven years i think you guys have heard <laughs> enough of us talking and <laughs> if it really weren't for you listeners i don't know if we'd still be doing this we we all enjoy it but the reason we'd be we doing sit, it but we wouldn't be recording it we wouldn't be recording <laughs> yeah. it and we wouldn't be doing it on a on such a regular schedule yeah, yeah. And we've all made, I can, I think I can speak for everyone. We've all actually made legit friends from this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, that's pretty cool, too. So. Yeah. J- yeah just think, 
Heinrich's had one gun on order for almost as long as he's been on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh no shit that's funny that he still has not received <laughs> oh my god well when maybe we'll end the, the show when he finally gets it. Bad. oh yeah oh, no. and, and lawsuits are involved i mean uh-huh. seriously i'm at, I'm at oh, the point of god oh oh yeah uh let's see heinrich didn't you pay up front for it oh yeah it was a pre- it was a full price pre-order yeah what what was that thing like 30, uh, 36, 3800? No. 1700? Oh, 1700? Yeah, it was not still. It was a it was a decent AR price, not a uh AR10 price. Mm. Or an MDR. God. But that MDR is sex. That thing is epic oh. with the black label bipod. Yeah, all the upgrades on that thing. Oh my god! Is, oh, those are nice. Now, for but, anybody who's wondering about the FD bipod, oh god, they're like, oh yeah, add you know an additional X amount of weeks for delivery. I'm like, crap. Okay, I'm just gonna do it because I'd rather get it in case crazy stuff goes down. And it's like, huh? Wow, shipped. And it says BLK. Okay. So is it black? Did I accidentally order black because it shipped almost immediately? And oh no, they're shipping directly from Canada. And it was the FDE one. And the matching is, oh, they did a good job matching that FDE with the yeah. base gun. Like that, that looks really good. And it worked. <laughs> oh. The playing with it in your office, it works well. You're just like, oh. You know, I don't <laughs> think Adam has even seen this. I'm not even sure if he got a picture of this thing. I don't know. I don't think so. <clears throat> I have to send him the in range video. Nah, I'll send him a picture of my gun configured with it because, you know. <laughs> reasons. That's yeah. me. Oh, nice. Remember, this is a gun that just over a year ago I took out to 1,400 yards. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Good it's a heavy God, beast. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing we're cool. the thing we're talking about is the fore end that's got the bipod coming out. Mm-hmm. That is an upgrade, and the truth is, if you had the fore end with a bipod and the sling swivel, the sling swivel, and then a pick rail for like mounting a light, mm-hmm. it's actually lighter to go with the black label that has all of that going from a plastic handguard to the metal. And it's more durable. So it's more durable and it's lighter. <clears throat> okay. It's kind yeah, of I think it looks cool. <laughs> oh, it looks cool. It handles surprisingly well. It's heavy nice. as hell, too. That That's the downside. It's heavy. I believe you. <laughs> uh, what? I, I waited here. Let me see if I can get a picture. Da, 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 da. And as per usual, we've already begun our wrap-up it, speech, only to dive right back into the yep. conversation. Yeah, it, it's yes, a 12, almost 13-pound gun. <laughs> and Matt keeps on going. And just ignores it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, I know. Yep. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll call it. We'll call it. We'll get this yeah. out. <laughs> I, it might, we might have longer gaps between episodes for a little bit still. Where There are things that are going on that we're busy with, so... Mm-hmm. Once everything gets settled, uh, we can get back to a more regular schedule, not a chaos schedule. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Sounds... it would be nice to have, you know, something, something, not random mechanical incidents, like tires blowing up, employees deciding to just, you know what, I don't feel like working anymore, and mm-hmm. all that kind of fun that, stuff. That. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it's been one of those just it's been a crazy time and I don't think anybody's gonna disagree with that. <laughs> it's been a crazy couple of years and honestly, guys, make sure that you're commenting on the ATF proposals because they basically want to call everything a receiver and like we talked about earlier in the show, GCA sixty eight, it screws me. It makes it really difficult. Then the White House is talking about cracking down on gun dealers. It's like, dude, 
So what you're saying is you want to declare every gun part a receiver, so it has to go through a gun store, and then you're going to start cutting down and removing the amount of gun stores there are? Brilliant. Yeah, that that, <laughs> that, that that's that's not good. And then uh-huh. there's the whole, oh, right, uh, since, what was that, 20... It, somewhere between 2014 and 2016, braces first started coming out, and ATF said those are those are stabilizing braces. They are perfectly legal to put on a pistol. Now they're trying to go, hey, yeah, no, putting those on, uh, we're gonna make a system so it's impossible for it not to be a short barrel rifle, and turn everyone who bought those into a felon. Granted, I've been watching local stores, and oh right. Those are the most popular guns anyone's buying. Mm-hmm. So, nope. mm. you're uh, from what I'm hearing, there are like 40 million plus of them in the market. You want to change the law and make 40 million new felons, or at least 40 yeah. million felonies? Well, yeah. Come again. <laughs> After the first felony, the rest are free. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean you make a darn good point. Because when you're like, wait, wait. So it's a felony because the regulators decide, you know what? No, we don't think that's legal anymore. Um, This is like the bump stocks turn to 11. Hmm. And yep. I know. A, I know. Some people complied, and I have a feeling a lot more didn't comply. So the question is how many are out there, and it's based on registration rates on when people are told, oh, no, you need to register these new weapon, these new quote-unquote assault weapons that you have owned for decades. <laughs> the registration rates are quite lower than what they expect them to be. Hmm... Yeah. My question is, if you make it a felony, how many of them are going to turn into, oh, wait, you won't let me do the legal system and pay you to turn this into a full auto, but it's already a felony to possess. Why don't I make it a full auto? Let's go the rest of the way. Let's go full third hole. It's one of those things where it's like, they are talking some very... They're playing with fire, and it's scary because they're, well, yeah. they're, they're talking about the per- person who the White House has put forward as a nominee to head the ATF is one of the guys involved in Waco. Because well, you know what that's Matt said, great. Matt said third hole. So I think we should wrap it up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're allowed to say. Yeah. I know we went uncensored a long time ago, but I still think that should probably not be a thing we say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we did say that like twice we're wrapping up. True enough, true enough. Yeah, Maybe so. in a few weeks I'll talk about actually getting my new 3D printer set up because... Oh, yeah. I mean... Because reasons. Why is it that 3D printers are so crap? I mean, they're so cool, but it's like... They're finicky as hell. They're all trash. Yeah, because because they're machines. I they're always fiddly. Machines do this thing where Machine. they fail. Yeah, machines that make stuff are fiddly. Yeah, that's the, a good word for it. They are, and the documentation on everything I have gotten so <laughs> far is abysmal. <laughs> and replacement yeah. parts are just. Not all that great. And then even for the ones that are pretty decent, it's like, okay, I'd rather get the better part, but then you have to start changing the code. And it's like. Uh, Who uh, needs that? Uh, yeah. It, it it really is one of those. It's check, please. <laughs> <laughs> Dear all God. right. But like I said, thanks everybody for listening and we'll get back to you in a couple of weeks. And. We'll probably have something weird, screwy, and very insanely geeky to talk about. <laughs> yep. Here's to another seven years. Live long and prosper, guys. See ya.